If you're starting off as a freelance or a contracting um, data analyst, um, then one of the easiest ways to uh, get your first few clients is to work with recruiters. If you're new to my channel, my name's Shawful, and on this channel we talk about everything data. So if you're a budding analyst or a seasoned pro or someone who shares an interest in data, please do subscribe to my channel. Also, press the bell icon so you don't miss out on all the helpful uh, tips and advice that I have to offer. Now, working with recruiters when you first start off as a freelance data analyst can be really uh, helpful. It can also mean that you can get clients much quicker than trying to do it yourself. Think of it as like, you know, you're marketing yourself. Now, you know, if you have to do the marketing yourself, then it's a lot of effort, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so if you're a company, for example, you would use a marketing agency. So recruiters are sort of a similar um, concept to that. What they do is they have a lot of roles that they go out and hunt for uh, from clients, and then they try and match people to those roles. So that's why I always recommend to people who uh, want to start off as a, a freelance data analyst or a contracting data analyst to go and work with recruiters. Now, this isn't always um, the case. I mean, sometimes you may already have a network or you may be working with an existing client uh, or you may be working at a company that you may leave and then go back and work for. But this for generally for people who um, want to start off as a, uh, a freelance or a contracting data analyst, what you should do. Now, the first thing I would do is not contact lots and lots of recruiters, okay? Speak to your network, speak to people, and try and choose one or two, maximum three recruiters that you wanna work with. Once you've identified those two or three, obviously meet them, see if they're right fit for you. And then when you've got your short list, okay, commit to them exclusively. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, counterintuitive because why would you wanna be exclusive with a handful of recruiters where you can send your CV to lots of recruiters and have lots of opportunities? Well, you've gotta see it from the recruiter's point of view, right? If they, um, if you are also with hundreds of other or tens of other recruiters, then, you know, they don't know that if they put you forward for a role that you're going for 10 other roles and whether you'd accept their role or accept someone else's role, okay? So you're more of a risk for them, less of a probability of, of converting you. So what you really want to do is work with, like I said, two, maximum three recruiters uh, and tell them that you'll be exclusive with them, that uh, you won't go to any other recruiters, you'll only work with them or work with one particular recruiter. So therefore, you know, uh, they can be guaranteed that you're not going to be interviewing elsewhere, you'll be purely interviewing with um, clients that they send. However, don't obviously make it um, favourable just for the recruiter, put a time limit on it, okay? Give them something between two to four weeks to get you interviewed. So say to them, look, um, I'll be exclusive with you for two to four weeks and I'll see how it goes. If you can get me lots of interviews, brilliant, I'll stay exclusive with you. But if you're not getting me interviews, then you know what, I'm going to look elsewhere. That then gives them some uh, motivation to get you interviews. Otherwise, they'll just think, oh, well, you're exclusive with me. I'll put you on my database and that's it. Now, when you are um, starting off as a freelance uh, a contracting data analyst, okay, it's quite tempting to put on your LinkedIn profile that I'm open to work. Now, my personal advice is don't do that. The there's a couple of reasons, main reasons for that. Uh, the first one is that when when you do that, you're going to get lots of recruiters contacting you, okay? The data space is still quite hot, um, you know, uh, even in, in this economy, but good candidates will always get a lot of interest from a lot of recruiters, okay? So you're going to get a lot of recruiters contacting you, um, and some of them will uh, mainly you just say, look, you know, uh, have a coffee with us, talk to us. And though it may be great to build your uh, network of recruiters, it will take up a lot of your time and probably time you can't afford because you need to be focusing on, um, you know, trying to get a job. The second reason I don't say open to work is because a lot of recruiters, A, they want to put you in your database, but B, they're trying to work out where you, which uh, company you left. So they can approach that company and the, the hire your manager and fill that role, okay? So what you'll find is a lot of recruiters will contact you and say, oh, let's have a coffee and all that. And through the discussion, they'll be trying to elicit and find out where you worked, or they'll probably know where you work from LinkedIn, but who you worked for and if the role's still open, that kind of stuff. So they can actually then contact your uh, old manager and fill the role. Okay, now that's not the case for all recruiters, but in my experience that does happen. So don't be naive to believe that it won't happen, that they won't contact you because they've got ulterior motives. So number two, don't put open to work at LinkedIn um, because it, it will take up a lot of your time responding to uh, a, a lot of requests that won't lead anywhere. Now number three, if you um, are entering the uh, contracting space, the freelancing space, one of the things 
you've got to bear in mind is that when clients hire you, they hire you to fix a problem immediately. So sort of they want to bring you in and within days you're up and running and you're fixing a problem for them. And that generally happens when you are an expert in something, okay? So if you have an expertise in something, uh, whether it's like you're using a visualization reporting tool like Power BI or Tableau, or you're very good at SQL, or you're very good at um, some data engineering or whatever it is that you're very good at, that's what you want to go into the market with. Because then what happens is clients have specific needs, you have a specific skill, you, it's easier for the recruiter to match you up to those clients and you'll find how much demand there is. Obviously, once you're in with a client, you'll obviously do a broader range of tasks, you build up your skill set, clients will know you for delivering more. And also the recruiter, uh, you put, when you're working with them, you can tell them, look, I've learned all these other skills, or I have all these other skills, okay? But it's usually good to go in and say, I'm an expert in one or two or, or a few tools. That way it's easier for the recruiter to match you to the client because the client will have a specific need. Number four is when you are, uh, when a recruiter or when you're working with a recruiter and they put you forward for interviews, don't expect from day one uh, to, you know, get a contract straight away, okay? What I would advise, especially for people who are new to this area, is use the interviewing process as a way of gauging what clients are looking for and how you should present yourself, okay? So go in for the first few handful of interviews, not with the expectation that you're going to land a role, but with the expectation that you want to learn. Now, if you do land a role in the first few interviews, that's great, you know, and, and good luck to you on that. But if you go with the expectation that you're going to land a role straight away, you may get disappointed because I mean, you may find that when you're new to the contracting freelancing space, you're not quite sure what clients are looking for. You don't respond in, in the way that you would have done if you're looking for a permanent role. Okay, so when you go uh, for interviews, go with the expectation that you're actually, it's a learning experience. You want to know what kind of questions client asks, um, you know, what kind of uh, uh, things they're looking for in a contractor. And hopefully you'll absorb that and you learn from that. Now, number five, obviously, like I said, you from your network or just people you know, or people you've worked with, find your one or two or three recruiters, you know, give them a period of exclusivity, but then over time, build relationships with recruiters and you know who are the good ones and who are not so good, okay? And also, you, you'll work out that for some of them you can work with and some, no matter how brilliant they are, it's very hard to work with them because you might have specific needs um, which don't match the, the way the recruiter operates, okay? So whenever I've um, worked with recruiters, I've built relationships with a handful of them. So I'm easy to, able to pick up the phone, um, both from a hiring manager point of view, but also from a freelancing point of view, where I've been able to pick up the phone and say, look, I'm looking for my next contract in the next few weeks. Um, if you hear of anything, let me know. This is what I'm interested in. And the, the recruiter gets to know, you know, what kind of fit you'll be with clients. So when they're talking to clients, they, they'll know straight away if you'll be a good fit with that client. So that saves time on both sides. So, you know, number five, build your relationship with recruiters, okay? Make sure that, um, you know, you are continually checking in with those that you uh, want to stay in touch with. Um, and also sometimes you might find that they will proactively reach out to you because they've got opportunities and even though you're in a contract it may be something that you want to consider um, or at least go for an interview for. And then finally number six is that you should build your own client network. So what would happen is when you're new to contracting and freelancing um, as a data analyst you're, you're going through the recruiter, you're being introduced to a client but once you're in clients okay work out who are the decision makers, who are the hiring managers okay, who are the ones that have need okay because don't forget you're when you are a freelancer you are your own business so therefore you've got to market yourself okay so when you go to these companies and you're working for them you know make connections with clients uh you know, during, after, take them out for coffee, stay in touch with them, share information with them, you know, let them know about your up progress. If you're free for contract, let them know that you're going to be free in a couple of weeks if they have a need. And hopefully you should say that, you know, worked in enough clients to build your own network of clients. That way you become less reliant on a recruiters. But also when you build your own network of clients and you work amongst those clients, you find that because you become familiar with the data, you become familiar with the business, uh, you become familiar with the tools that they, that you, that they use, that you become much better at delivering value and therefore clients will value you and then you can also deliver more value to them. So in essence, um, if you are a freelance uh, data analyst um, or, a, you know, business intelligence analyst or anything freelancing, um, um, you know, or, or contracting roles, you know, how you should work with recruiters. So the first one is uh, choose um, one or two, three maximum recruiters that you would work exclusively with for a time period between two and four weeks. Then don't put open to work in LinkedIn because you'll get a lot of interest, a lot of um, uh, queries. 
In fact, I mean, just to uh, say something that's contradictory to that is you may want to open up just for a little bit to see how much interest you get. It's good for the ego to know that lots of people are contacting you, but then I would turn it off. But generally, um, you know, if you're good at what you do, don't turn on the LinkedIn open to work because you get a lot of interest from people, a lot of queries from people, actually, more, more accurately, um, which could waste a lot of your time and, and not align with what you're uh, hoping to achieve. Number three, be specific about what you have to offer to the recruiter so the recruiter can match what you have to offer to what the client wants so therefore you're not wasting uh, each of each of anyone's time because you're being matched more accurately uh, to the client who has need for your skills number four in the initial stages go to the interviews as a as uh, with the expectation of learning from them okay um like i said if you land a job that's great but uh, your expectation should be i'm going to learn from the first few interviews and then the next few will be where i test what i've learned and hopefully get a contract number five build relationships with recruiters okay the better your relationship with recruiters, the better you'll find that your role as a contracting uh, a data analyst is much better. You'll have much more contracts. You'll always be busy. And in fact, you may find that you are um, having to choose between uh, uh, options because there's so many uh, options coming to you. And then number six, the most important one, build your own client re uh, network and relationships. So once you're in with clients, make sure you stay in touch with them, make sure you know, um, you know uh, how you can help them. And also the other thing I, I should have mentioned is that clients also move to other companies okay so if you stay in touch with those clients and they move to other companies it's likely that if they have a problem or a challenge there they'll ask you to come in okay that's about it for this video um, if you enjoyed the video please do like the video please share the video also please do subscribe to my channel and um, do ring the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos thank you